All right, time for another quick project update. It's probably been a little bit since my last one, so a fair bit to kind of cover, but I'll go ahead and just dive straight in. So at a high level, this is a Mark uh, 1.5, uh, first generation MR2. So Mark 1.5 is usually a reference to the powertrain. In this case scenario, we've got a second generation engine, hence Mark 1.5, since it's a blend between the two. So this is a technically a uh, 3SGTE engine. It is pretty heavily modified, uh, typical built internals. Uh, found a exhaust manifold from a rally car. Um, so that's actually Inconel. I got a Borg Warner EFR turbo down below to kind of spool things up. This is an anti-lag valve. And these are the fresh air supplies that will feed the turbo fresh air for a proper rally style anti-lag setup. Um, not complete, this is a air to water intercooler. So the passageways you would see here would be a coolant passageways. And then of course, major end tanks are where the compressed air goes through and gets cooled. I've got a drive-by-wire throttle body with my own designed throttle body uh, adapter. And this whole engine is mounted in here with my own mounts. Not that they're really visible. Um, well, I guess this one is. So the whole engine is kind of fixtured in there and I'll have to kind of remake the jig when it's all said and done. So if I ever had to change the chassis, we can go ahead and replicate what we're doing. So anyways, that's the Mark 1.5. Um, I've kind of taken this a step further. Um, honestly, this is just a fun project. I like to wrench, and this has been a an outlet for many years, with the last year uh, quite a bit of progress. So not only do I have a second uh, generation style engine, well, technically it's a Gen 4 3S engine for those that are pretty familiar with the platform, um, I've also done a five lug conversion as well as some big brakes and a fair bit of work with a custom coilover setup from Kony. Um, so the front and rear knuckles on this car are from a SW20 or second generation MR2. Um, I ended up opting for these two uh, hubs because they have wheel speed sensors. And the wheel speed sensors are for ABS and traction control. So these are things that I'm retrofitting onto the car. Um, for better or worse, there's so much power, I figure I should have at least some safety features that I can turn on and off as I see fit. And it took a fair bit of effort, not that I claim to do all the design work for this. Uh, part of the task with the whole setup is the rear. Now let's see about getting some light here. So we can see a rear subframe. That subframe is pretty critical to make the second gen knuckles fit and have proper toe control as your suspension compresses. Otherwise, you could never really fit these second generation knuckles onto the AW11 or first gen MR2 chassis. Uh, let's look at the exhaust that I'm kind of planning to, to run. So, of course, just my own design. It's just tacked up for now. Again, Kony ground controls uh, style setup, I should say. So, Kony struts. So, I've got much taller tires. So, these tires are, of course, uh, I think many may be familiar. Uh, Falcon Azenis, RT660s, on a very nicely uh, styled Nissan Skyline GTR wheel. So front and back, these are 16 by 8s plus 35s. So to get the clearance, because I am running a much taller tire than factory, these are 225.50 R16s. Of course, that's upside down. The extra height means that if I compress the suspension it'll actually hit the fender and the steel so I ended up cutting all that out 
I'm in the process of cleaning everything up so I can weld it. There, that's a much better angle. So a little bit more work to go on this. And of course I still have to do all the cutting on the other side. So I'm almost halfway there. Rinse for, pre for the front. Oh, I gotta pay attention to my camera angles. <laughs> Again, taller tires in the front, 16 by eights. Um, this little strip of steel, we had to kind of hammer flat to get some clearance. Otherwise the tire as it compresses would touch and that probably would not end too well for the tire. So hammered it back out, welded it shut, added on some tabs which still need some cleanup. And all of that will be used for a fender liner. So for those that are pretty familiar with the MR2 chassis, your second gen, they don't really fit a eight inch wide wheel without quite a bit of work. So my approach is probably different from most, but I've actually modified the factory strut housing since the strut cartridge itself is removable from the housing. So I got a nice chromoly steel laser cut. Actually, maybe this is water jet cut if I recall. But my own design, I added an extra 10 mil of offset to this, and that gives me plenty of clearance for the threaded coilover setup and my 16 by 8 plus 35 wheels. Considering the upper and lower ball joints haven't changed, I figured this should be perfectly acceptable and it gets me at least out the door. And if I have to take it all apart and modify it again, I'd be happy to. So coming back to the front, since uh, the engine is in the middle, getting air to air cooling for an intercooler is a little challenging. I've got a pair of additional radiators. And these two radiators are going to be used con in conjunction for the intercooler. There's an incomplete swirl pot set up. So this will essentially help get any sort of air bubbles in this auxiliary cooling system up and out. Had to notch this in preparation for each cooler will come together and they'll tee and the coolant line will go through there and back to the pump to the intercooler and the process will kind of loop back. So in either case, uh, quite a bit to go for that project, but at least a lot of the, the major work is all said and done. These are actually uh, motorcycle radiators. And I had to cut the intakes off and redo all of them for clearance so I can fit the biggest ones as possible. Um, when it's all said and done, I will have some O-ring type of material or some rubber gasket between the radiators and the chassis. That'll give a little bit of flex. Uh, looks pretty bad, but honestly, this was pretty badly damaged before. So I've all done a lot of metal work trying to bring this thing back into proper shape. So now the headlights and everything else fits as it should. So just waiting for paint. Now a lot's kind of going on in here. Um, so I'll kind of keep it high level. I got a PMU 16th and this will help control all of the additional electronics I'm adding to the car. I mentioned ABS. So this is an ABS unit, ironically, out of a BMW, much like the one over here. So this is a Z4 M Coupe, a little dirty, because I do a lot of work in here and it's too cold to drive the thing. But in either case, the E46 M3 and my Z4 M, they have an ABS system that you can technically retrofit onto other cars. It's a true four channel ABS system. And with a little bit of tuning, um, yeah, you can, you can add ABS to pretty much anything, apparently. I uh, had the company spec the whole kit up for me, they, and they built a wiring harness, which is the hardest part of the whole thing, considering all of your wheel speed sensors would need to be shielded. So, anyways, there's the pump for that. Up top, I have one of the yaw control sensors that I'll have to mount to the chassis. And that's kind of my next step. Um, all of the other activity here is 
a fair bit of work, but I'll kind of go over it one by one. Uh, we've got a vacuum pump. So because I will have an anti-lag setup, there is the potential for uh, an extended period of time where the engine is not making any vacuum at all. And because you've got a brake booster, which relies on vacuum to give you that power assist, I need a backup supply of vacuum to assist with that. So anyways, I'll have this uh, vacuum pump here. Uh, most muscle cars that have really large cams kind of run into the same scenario where they don't have enough engine vacuum and the brakes maybe are a little lacking. Oftentimes, this little reservoir, which is a comp cams vacuum reservoir, as they call it, but basically just an aluminum tank, and it helps with engine vacuum for... Um, at least when the engine does make vacuum, if it does, this will hold it for a little bit longer, thereby giving your main brake booster a little bit, a little bit of extra power. So all of this is going to help out with braking, essentially. I've got a fuel cell here. So I still have the main fuel tank in the car. And that fuel tank will feed this one. And this is essentially kind of an overflow or, a, you know, I call it a surge tank, but it's two gallons. And I'll have a fuel pump in here, and that'll feed the engine, and the return from that will come back to this tank. The main gas tank and fuel pump there will feed this and overflow back to the main tank. Now this is an electric AC compressor, and the big heat sink below it is the controller for that. So the goal is, ultimately, I do want to have AC in the car, because I do drive it, and I like driving it in the summer. So... A lot of heat makes for less than pleasant experience, and hopefully I can get that all plumbed in and working so I'll actually have air conditioning when I, when I choose to have it. Just hanging out here is a battery. I still am waiting to make a battery box and tray to hold that set up, but that's uh, soon enough. I think I'll have one massive bracket that holds a number of parts here. Do a quick show and tell of the interior. So a bit of a mess because it's just used to hold parts at this point, but here is a, it's a knockoff seat, so it's not a genuine one, but it is a bride style seat. It's um, fiberglass clamshells, upper and lower piece. I'm getting these reupholstered because honestly the fabric is pretty terrible from the factory, is, well, at least with the knockoffs. Um, it's kind of what you get, what you, you get what you pay for. <laughs> But for me, you know, I've redone a lot of the foam on these things and they're pretty comfortable since I'm kind of building them myself. But project to finish up later on. Anyways, we got a nice uh, roll cage. The same company that did the rear subframe also helped out with the roll cage. This is definitely more of a street friendly cage, so there's only the main upper loop. Harness bar sections. And as you get in and out of the car, the main hoop here drops and runs along the main frame rail. So it adds a bit of extra uh, stiffness. And it doesn't help um, probably too much in a side impact crash for your legs. But your hips should be protected. You get chassis stiffening benefits out of it. And it's easy to climb in and out of the car normally. So if anything, I figure this is better than nothing. But uh, definitely not a full race spec cage. Again, I'm building this to a street car and I'm building it to my own spec. So honestly, I'm just having fun. <laughs> Got a nice uh, six point harness. A personal style se steering wheel, energy quick release. Anyways. A long ways to go to kind of wrap up the interior. I still have a lot of electrical. I have to run through it. And my door cards. And actually, I reupholstered these myself. I'm not going to say they turned out perfect, but it was a lot of fun doing it. And honestly, when they're clean, it looks halfway decent. So that's the car and the project. This has probably been... Five years off the road at this point in time, and honestly, it's probably going to be another 
six months of hard work to get this thing over the finish line. It won't be perfect, but at least it'll be running and driving. And then I can work out all the bugs, which inevitably, you know, I'm going to encounter. You know, this is a total re-engineering of the whole car. And then one day I'll dream of paint and getting things cleaned up. But that's not for me to worry about today. Oh, yeah. A little block of foam in preparation to make some uh, fiberglass duct work to help air exit out of these. And try to get some aerodynamic benefits out of it. Eh, anyways, that's the project. Hope you like it.